It's about 6 o'clock in the morning, and while most of Bermuda is still fast asleep, the crew of the research vessel Atlantic Explorer are already hard at work preparing for the day's expedition. Joining them are a group of middle school students or bionauts from the BIOS Explorer program. Under the watchful eye of the captain, everyone gathers on the main deck for safety briefing. One of the most important things to practice is putting on an immersion suit. In the unlikely event of the Atlantic Explorer sinking, you'll need to get into one pretty quickly. So let's see how Fahim, one of the bionauts, does. Once you've got your legs inside, slide your arms in as well. Then with a little help from your friends, do up the front zipper and the hood. Now Fahim did well getting into his in about three minutes, but the crew practiced so much they can put one on in under 30 seconds. After all that, it's definitely time for some breakfast. While everyone else heads down to the galley, the captain sets sail for Hydra Station S. Hydra Station S is an area of ocean 15 nautical miles southeast of Bermuda. Upstairs in the computer lab, some of the bionauts are busy coloring in styrofoam cups for a unique experiment will investigate the massive pressure found at the bottom of the ocean. Meanwhile, down at the work deck, the remaining bionauts are being introduced to the oceanographer's best friend, the CTD. CTD stands for Conductivity, Temperature, and Depth. Around the CTD is a ring or rosette of tubes called Niskin bottles. These start off open but can be individually closed at a push of a button by a boat technician up at the wheelhouse. Water samples can be collected from different depths depending on what the scientists need. Each bottle holds 12 liters of seawater. Finally, the roar of the engines fades to a dull rumble and seabirds begin to land all around the ship. We've arrived at Hydro Station S. Time to do some work. Colored and named star from cups. We're gonna send them down to the bottom of the sea in the sea today. Um, the air bubbles trapped inside will get squashed due to the high pressure. And when we bring them back up, there'll be a star from ball. Down on the work deck, the marine technicians are busy preparing the CTD for deployment. So the bionauts leave the computer lab and gather outside on the observation deck. Released from its platform, the CTD is carefully hoisted into the air by the crane. The crew keep a firm grip on the guide ropes to prevent the delicate equipment from hitting the gunnels. And once it's in the correct position, the crane operator gently lowers the CTD into the water. They've just put the CTD in over there. The CTD will take an hour to reach its maximum depth of 3,000 meters. Throughout the ship, computer screens constantly monitor its progress. Uh, well, the CTD has just reached 3,000 meters and it's now on its way back up. Up in the computer lab, the bionauts have been given the job of collecting all the data being generated by the CTD and plotting it onto graphs. They will then compare this to samples taken on previous expeditions to see if anything has changed. As you can see from the screen, we just came up from about 3,000 meters. Right now we're at about 800 meters and we just fired battle number 11. The CTD is just about to come to the surface. After two hours, the CTD finally returns to the surface. The marine technicians use boat hooks to snag the guide ropes out of the water and then use these to guide the CTD back onto the deck. While the marine technicians move the CTD into the wet lab, the bionauts are inside ready and waiting. But before they are allowed to start work on unloading the CTD, the bionauts need to put on their blue safety helmet as well as their bright orange flotation jackets just like the crew. The chief scientist and his assistants are already hard at work, checking each Niskin bottle payload of seawater for dissolved oxygen. One of the technicians lets the bionauts feel how cold the water is in bottle number 24. Down at 3,000 meters, 1.87 miles, the water is as chilly 4 degrees Celsius. Two different chemicals are added to the samples from each bottle and given a good shake. This causes all the oxygen in the water to turn into a solid, cloud-like substance. This stops the oxygen escaping before the scientists back in the lab have time to study it. Next, the bionauts are shown how they too can collect water samples from the Niskin bottles. These samples won't be checked for dissolved oxygen though. They will be taken back to the laboratory at BIOS and studied under special microscopes to see what sort of bacteria are living in the water. I collected water from Niskin bottle number 13. I filled it up three times and then I threw, up, threw it out each time. And then I filled it up to 40 milliliters. In just one milliliter of seawater, there can be up to half a million bacteria. So in the 40 milliliter sample Joshua has collected, there could be 20 million bacteria.
Do you remember those diaphragm cups the Bionauts sent to the bottom of the ocean in the CTD? Well, here they are. They look a bit smaller, don't they? That's because at 3 kilometers, 1.87 miles below the surface, the pressure is 300 times greater than what you are feeling right now at sea level. Styrofoam is full of tiny air bubbles, and it's these that have been squashed into even tinier air bubbles. The cups have been quite literally crushed. Here's a quick reminder on just how much they've changed in size. Pretty impressive, huh? After a hard day's work, the Atlantic Explorer finally returned to Bermuda. A pilot boat from St. George's arrives carrying a very special person. He is called a pilot and will safely navigate us through the once treacherous reefs that surround Bermuda. While he's doing this, the captain and the crew prepare to moor the Atlantic Explorer at the bias dock in Ferry Reach. Now that the cruise is finished, it's time to hand over all that information to the scientists. There are a lot of projects at BIOS, and each one has a principal investigator, or a PI. In the accompanying modules, you'll get to meet these PIs and their teams as they investigate physical, chemical, and biological oceanography. We'll see you there.